Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with Boating Tech Talk. So we've got a question from a fellow boater. Um, this boater is wondering about wire sizes specifically for large loads that are running intermittently, right? So a thruster, a starter, a windlass, a winch, those loads are generally not running for 20 minutes or 10 minutes continuous, right? They're sort of sporadic. They come on, they're intermittent. So the question from this boater is as follows. Jeff, I've got a 53-foot uh, catch, and the bow thruster draws about 500 amps at 24 volts. So that's a lot of amperage. At 12, it would be 1,000. 1,000 amps. Just imagine that. That's crazy. What is the best and reasonable way to size a wire? The manufacturer of the boat decided to go 2 watt for 20 feet. Still undersized, but they claim it's okay due to the loads not being sustained. What to do? Oh, God, I love it. Really geeky question. Um, it's interesting. First of all, let, let's back up a little bit and let's think about this issue. You know, people and boaters and builders and, you know, previous owners and people in the marine industry are, all of us are incented to save costs. We all are, right? That's, that's what we've been taught by our parents. We've been taught that through life. We're trying to do more things with less, right? That's life. The challenge is, is that all too often, wire sizes are chosen on basically trying to do the most with the least amount. And that might work for a lot of boaters that never use their boats. Think about it. Marinas are full of boats that never leave the dock. Those boaters have everything they need on board because they never use their boat. The board is, is simply an, uh, something in their imagination, something they might get to use. But for the rest of us that are actually using our boats, and like for this example, this owner has a bow thruster and plans on using his bow thruster. If I was running a bow thruster that had a 500 amp load at 24 volts, and it doesn't matter if it's 12, 500 amps or 500 amps at 24, it's still just 500 amps. Would I be running two watt wire to that you know what, maybe it works, but I would go up on a wire size. I think it's important to emphasize that minimum does not mean ideal. Minimum is what it means. It means that actually the very least you should do is this. That does not mean that that's what you should shoot for. That means that you should never do less than that. So when in times people are saying, well, actually I'm gonna do less than the minimum, that's where I get a little bit nervous. Now, it's not going to actually, you know, in this instance, what could happen if you undersize a thruster could be one of the things that could happen is that windless, under not windless or thruster, under load is going to be underpowered, right? Because voltage under load and no load is different. So I would have probably done 4 aught. I would have gone bigger. And I always err on the size of caution because my philosophy when we're designing and implementing electrical systems is that time is the most valuable thing we have, not necessarily money. And you don't want to do something and have to do it again. There's nothing more frustrating than doing it once and doing it a second time. So when we size wires, we size batteries, we size everything, we never shoot for the least amount we can do. We go a little bit on caution and go a little bit up. And we figure, you know what, if we're gonna put the time to put a cable in, why not go up a size? Yeah, sure, it might be more capital cost, more money on the wire size, but you know what? I don't want my thruster to ever be under voltage, under load, because that's how thrusters, windless starters die. Winches, they all die, not because the manufacturer doesn't know how to build a good windless or a good thruster. It's simply because, you know, the batteries are too far away. They're already somewhat depleted. You're running the thruster for longer than you should have. All these exceptions, but they do happen. And then eventually your thruster actually goes kaput. And that's frustrating because it's expensive. So personally, even intermittent loads, yes, it's a factor in derating a wire, right? Like when you go through a formula, you, you ask literally, is this a constant load or an intermittent load? But even for intermittent load for a thruster at 500 amps, I would have gone a little bit bigger wire size because I think the minimum is not ideal. And it's a really good question. Um, and think about that when you're doing your boat. Don't go for the floor. Go a little higher than the least amount you can do. So great question. Thanks for asking. Thank you for watching this PYS video. If you've got further questions, please ask them below or send us an email via the contact forms on our website. Happy to donate my time to share information with you. You can support us in keeping this channel ad-free by purchasing some merchandise on our store or by making a donation on PayPal. 
and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching.